you didn't raise your hand, you have a chance to participate in this year's caucus. Again, it's on Saturday, March the 7th. It's going to be in the afternoon. Uh, the Broomfield Democratic Party is going to have its caucus at uh, Broomfield High School. We have had excellent, excellent turnout in 2016 and 2018, and we want to do the same again in 2020. So, again, yes, Neil? What time in the afternoon? What time in the afternoon? Uh, I believe it starts at, uh, people are in their rooms uh, talking uh, about what they're going to be doing. I think, I believe it's at 2 a.m.? Yes, no, Reg no, 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 registration's at one. Uh, and then the caucus begins at 2 p.m. So again, put it in your calendar, one o'clock, Broomfield High School. Kathy. Thank you. Um, this, is, this has been a great night. Thank you so much for everybody that's shown up. It's a great crowd. Um, I'm gonna try to go through this quickly. You should have a handout that gives you the um, most important facts which are all of the dates, and we'll go quickly over what's going to be happening. And also on the back of that sheet is what are you ready to do? On each of your tables, you have uh, volunteer forms, and one of the things that is going to make us successful this year are our volunteers. And if you can bring five of your friends to volunteer as well, we will have a very successful year. So as Andy's already gone through the times for our caucus, precinct caucus, please put this on your calendar and we are looking for up to 15 volunteers to help us with registration that will need to be um, in place at one o'clock and then our gavel will go down at two and we'll, we're at the high school again. So what are the goals? One of the things that is a real challenge this year is the fact of why the heck are we still doing caucus? We have a primary, we have a presidential primary in March 3rd. Why are we still doing this? The goals for caucus are to invite new folks into our party. There's going to be a big marketing. Um, we're gonna try to educate folks to participate in caucus. We have a very small participation rate um, for caucus. Those of you who participated, you know, some of our caucus, or some of our precincts will have two or three people. That's that's terrible. We got to increase the people, number of people who participate in our democracy. And it, there, it's the first step. These are the folks that make the grassroots work. Improve our diversity. Make folks feel welcomed. This is what we need to do to make sure people keep coming back and come to our meetings, go to the events, vote. Get out the vote. Help us campaign. Do our canvassing, our phone banks, all of the all of the work that we have to do in order to make sure that our goals are met. We win the White House. We, we turn the Senate, and we make this country into the place we want to live, not not what we've got right now. Recruit volunteers at caucus. We we and. Um, I think it was 2018, we had fi almost 1,500 people caucus. That's a lot. We got a lot of volunteers out of that. We need to um, capitalize on the folks that come to caucus. Um, so that's, that's the first step in our year, March 7th. The next step is our county assembly. At county assembly, we want to make our process transparent, again, recruit volunteers, and illustrate the fairness and neutrality of the process. It's also very complex. I understand that, and democracy is messy sometimes. This is the process we have in order to be transparent and to in increase our diversity and inclusion. The next event is the convention, which is the state at the state level, where we encourage ded dedicated delegates, recruit ambassadors of the party, and re again, recruit volunteers. The purpose at our caucus is to elect delegates to our county assembly and our convention. We elect precinct committee people. Precinct committee people actually organize your precinct. Your precincts are relatively manageable areas of um, voters. And we, we really need at least one or two people per precinct to help us organize your neighbors in your neighborhoods. We have 37 precincts in um, Broomfield, and we should be able to come up with 37 
50, 70, how many, 36 times two, 74, <laughs> 37 precinct, 74 PCPs. That's our goal. Um, getting PCPs, reviewing and adding to our party platform, our party county platform, and elevating our issues to the state level. And election judges, selecting election judges. At the assemblies, we have, in Broomfield, we are part of four multi-county districts. CD2, the Congressional District 2, that's Jonah Goose right now. And HD33 is Matt Gray. That's our House District in the state. Senate District 23 right now is Vicki Marble, and she's term limited. And we have, um, we're putting a lot of effort in flipping that seat in Colorado State Legislature. And the last one is Judicial District 17, which we share with Adams, um, Adams County. We have one Democratic candidate and Brian Mason, you may have met him, he comes to a lot of our events, he is running. So at the assembly that will happen March 21st, we will elect delegates to the state assembly and to all of the district assemblies for these offices. That's when we will decide, we'll nominate um, all of the the House, Senate District, the District Attorney, the Regent, the State Board of Education candidates, and we will be selecting delegates for those races at the assemblies. This is a good opportunity to get involved in the political process. It's very easy to do these jobs. People learn them very quickly, and it's a lot of fun, actually. The convention. Um, we will elect delegates to the congressional district, state, and national conventions. We'll elect electors and elect DNC members. Um, DNC members, I think that's supposed to be DNC um, delegates. People who go to the Democratic National Convention, which will be in Milwaukee this year in July. How does the caucus fit into all of our election process? This is what we're gonna be doing this year, March 1st, 3rd, will be part of Super Tuesday. That is our presidential primary. That's when we will elect our Democratic nominee. Um, where, where, well, let's see. I am not the best, I don't know this 100%. This is why I understand it. The presidential primaries in Colorado will de help determine who the Democratic nominee will be for president. At the caucus, we will do all those things we just went through, the delegates to the state assemblies and the state convention. The county assembly here, assembly here in March is when we actually select our delegates for the state and county convention. I mean the state convention and assembly. That's April 17th. The state primary is when we will vote for the Democratic candidates for the races in the state only. So that the, the top race there is the U.S. Senate race. And then we have the general election on November 3rd. Dana. At the caucus, isn't there something with U.S. Senate candidates at the caucus as well? Yes. At the Senate, yeah, did I, I, I blew over that, didn't I? The preference poll that we'll be conducting on the caucus will be for U.S. Senate, that's the key race. So delegates for your, your Senate candidates will be selected at caucus based on the support for the Senate candidates in your precinct. I know that doesn't sound very clear right now. Neil, you have a question or a clarifying comment to make this easier? Question. question. It relates. Go ahead. But it relates to that. So, um, as I understand, and maybe you guys can answer this way, a Senate candidate can get onto the primary ballot either through the caucus or through petitioning or some combination? Is that right? Yes. That, that makes it, that, that like quadruples the complexity of this process. Senate candidates can get onto the primary ballot either by getting 15% of caucus support. They can petition on by some number of um, signatures also. They can do a combination of those, one, one other, one, one or the other or both. Plus they, and the, the third way to get on, or I guess the fourth way, caucus only, petition only, a combination of caucus and petition, or they can be nominated from the floor of the state assembly. So that makes it even more complicated. Do 
you know the so they do this combination of the topics and the positions or the number of signatures and the percentage at the at the assembly? Yes. And if a candidate chooses to go both ways, they have to meet thresholds for both methods. So it's risky for a candidate to do both. Jared Polis did both successfully. Some of the candidates did caucus only. If you remember back in 2016, I think Carrie Kennedy, or 2018, um, Carrie Kennedy tried caucus only. She didn't make meet threshold. Some people tried petition only. They didn't make threshold either. So it's, it's a complicated thing, and campaigns are, and candidates are working really hard to figure out how to strategize and get through this. You think it's tough for us. They have to manage this in a way that's costing them money too. Michelle. Just an, addend, just an added thing, because I'm learning about the process myself, is you can caucus for one person and sign a petition for another. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So you can only sign a petition for one candidate. Yeah, so like if you want to caucus for one person, but you can also sign a petition for another person. Huh. Okay. No more questions. <laughs> Caucus, oh, we, we will be doing caucus training, and I would encourage all of you to sign up for caucus <laughs> training, and if, um, if you can be the precinct leader and run your caucus, that is the, the most work you can miss. That will help so much, because once, if we have good, competent leaders in the precincts, the, the work gets done more quickly, and the data that we have to combine is, is much easier and more accurate. And it, it really does help to um, to make sure that we are a well-functioning party in this county. And actually, we have this this organization. I'm so proud of everybody here. We we have done amazing work in the last four years. You, you know, you've seen our success in city council. You've seen our success in getting out the vote. You've seen our success in getting more people involved. I mean, look at this room. When when I first started coming to this meetings, if we had five people. It was a good night. We could all, you know, sit around one table. This is amazing, and we were only just starting. 2020 is here, and it, it's it's an existential thing. I mean, I have stopped watching the news just because I can't take it anymore. Um, a lot of people feel that way. We can't give up. We also can't peak too early. We have all of these elections coming up. November 3rd, the biggest one. We have to show that we can get 90 plus registered voters in Broomfield to the polls. That means getting out the vote every day for the time that those ballots are on people's t kitchen tables. And we need bodies. We need feet on the ground. We need people on the phones. And if you can't get five of your friends to grab a, grab a bag of popcorn and walk your neighborhood, make sure everybody votes. It's critical. This is our first step in here, the, the caucus. And remember, this all of us here are all volunteers. Nobody here, the only stake we have in here is, is creating the country that we're living in. And that's huge. Um, but we, we're doing this because we, we care and we're, we are willing to spend our time. Put this on your calendar. And let me just go through quickly the types of things that you can help us with. Caucus training, we're going to start um, scheduling probably the end of January. We'll go through February. We'll have several classes um, on, a, on a big schedule. We'll have Sign Up Genius, and we'll have it in our email. So you, should, you will be able to find out where caucus training is happening. We've got three people who are going to be teaching them, so we should be able to cover everybody who wants to do a caucus training. Once you attend a class, if you could teach others, we can never have too many people know how to caucus. Um, help, help us register caucus participants. This is one we need 12 to 15 people to work the registration tables. You will need to have a Windows PC and an Android phone because that's the platform that's used for our registration. Um, be a precinct committee person or a precinct leader. A precinct leader is, um, well, let me do precinct committee person first. That is an actual elected position. It's a formal member of the party and it's a two-year term. 
and it has obligations to organizing your precinct, coming to meetings, um, you'll get data, you get support, you have, you have the whole county party behind you. Precinct leaders are just about the same thing without the formal title. So we ask that you organize your precinct and you run your precinct um, caucus and you grow into a leader in, in, the, in the party. Prepare a platform issue for consideration at the caucus and for county assembly. Those precinct, those um, platform issues will be incorporated into our county platform and they can be elevated to the state as well. This is where you decide what is important to you and we share those with our elected representatives and pressure them to work toward those issues, work on those issues. Become an election judge. How many people in here are election judges? Lots of you. I've, I've never been able to do this, however, um, I understand it's very rewarding and a lot of people do it. Um, we've got a list of like 75 people who are willing to be election judges and we're always looking for good folks to do that. Start a recurring donation on Act Blue. On your tables, there's a, a card with a QR code that goes directly to Act Blue. A recurring donation, five, ten, fifteen, a hundred dollars a month. Any of that is great. <coughs> we use it for mailings. We use it to rent these spaces. We use it for all of the events we have throughout the year, including caucus. We have to pay for the space. We have we have to rent Brookfield High School. We have to pay for that space. We have to pay for the space in the assembly, and it, it all takes money. Plus, we want an election action center in August again because we're going to have a presidential campaign, we're going to have Senate, we're gonna have a lot of races, very important ones, and we use the Election Action Center to work out of, to um, hand out literature, to do loan banks. Folks who've worked in the Election Action Center, you know that we, we do a lot of work there. We usually only have it from August through the election, and it costs money. So, QR code on these little things that you've got on the table, start your recurring donation that helps us know what we can spend uh, between now and November. Working on campaigns, most of you probably have already done that. We have phone banking, canvassing, get out the vote. Be a volunteer or field coordinator for your precinct. The other thing we really, really need is people to organize events. We have two event organizers, and it's a heavy lift. Most of the executive committee have done events it's not that tough. If you can organize a kid's birthday party, you can organize an election watch party. Please step up and just do it. Um, it doesn't take that much time, and you've got the executive committee and a whole lot of volunteers behind you. You also have in front of you these um, nomination forms or volunteer forms. If you would, um, fill those out, and I guess you can bring them to this table, or um, we'll, we'll pick them up, me or Andy. Just give them to one of us and we'll make sure these get in. And the other thing is we are volunteers and if your name or your form falls through the crack and we don't call you, please call us. It is much easier for you to remember us than it is for us to remember all of you. Um, and we do have, we do make mistakes and sometimes we, we don't get back to people quickly enough. So please be persistent. Our democracy depends on us. And I hate to be over dramatic, but I, I don't know how we can be over dramatic, actually. Um, so that's all I have. And do we have any any questions? Anything for the good of the party? Do we have a budget? A budget? We do have a budget. 